Hello, 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 hello. Thanks for listening to the Barbara Cox Podcast. And today's question, are you providing a light for your children to carry? Are you providing a light for your children to carry? Or you providing a light or you provoking them into a very dark, dark place? That's a lengthy question today. That's what I hear in the spirit and what I hear in the spirit, I will speak. Today's question, are you providing a light? In other words, are you, are you giving your children a light to carry? Or are you provoking them to a point to where they feel hopeless? They feel unloved. They feel undesirable. All because you're not willing to, to provide them with the necessary light so that they can see. They can see Christ. You may be the only Christ that they see. And I'm not just saying this. Children look to their parents for direction. They look to their parents for instruction. So we are to instruct our children through our life, the way we live, the way we operate, the way we react, the way we respond to life, daily issues, daily struggles, our trials, our tribulations. We are providing a light. So we are providing a light for our children to carry. What type of light are they going to carry? Is it going to be a bright light or dim light or is it going to be a light at all? Or are you a person that's always provoking your child? And when you provoke them, you put them into a dark, dark place. Because the, the, in the, the word of God tells us not to provoke our children. And, to, it, it, and when you provoke them, when you, dis, when you, when you, when you discourage them, then, then you're provoking them into anger. Then you have a child that's very angry. You have a child that's hurt. But you have a child that, that, feels, that feels low, a very, very low self-esteem. They, they, don't, they don't know that, the, that they are loved. They don't know that they're cared for. So then they're not carrying a, a, a light. They're walking around in a dark, dark place. They're in a dark place. All because a parent or parents provoke them into anger. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. So what does that mean? Then you begin to to raise children that have foolish ways. They think foolishly. They act foolishly. And that's not what we want. And and, and, and we don't want that. In in, in Colossians 3.21, I'm going to repeat what it says in the word. It says... Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't provoke them into anger. Because then it makes them discouraged. They are so discouraged. They're living in dark, a dark, dark place. And then once you're at that point, then you're you're... If you're a person that, if you're a parent that's discouraged, meaning you're a hurt parent, then you're you're allowing that generational curse to continue. Because sometimes a hurt parent will cause a hurt child. A frustrated parent will cause a frustrated child. Provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and abomination of the Lord. That's in Ephesians 6 and 4. So provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and abomination of the Lord. So we are to nurture our children. We are to train them up in the way God would have us to. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he, he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. That's Proverbs 22, 6. Deuteronomy eleven nineteen, And ye shall teach thy children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest thy way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So we are to train our children, or we are 
teach them the life of Jesus. We are to teach them of God's power, of God's amazing grace. And then we are to exhibit those fruits of the spirit. We are to exhibit love and peace and kindness and joy and long suffering. We are to be a, an example of Christ for them. We are to show this to generation to generation to generation. Showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. We are to show to our generations. So when we do it in front of our children, we show them the the. the the, the handiwork of Christ. We show them the, the works of God and how, and we teach them. We teach them and we praise the Lord. They see us praying and they see us praising. They, they begin to imitate what they see, not what they hear, but what they see. The largest percentage of the time a child is going to imitate what they see. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord in his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments. That's Psalm 78, 4 through 7. These are our duties as parents. These are our duties as parents. It's to train up our children in the way of Christ, of God, of the works, the wonderful works of God, the praises of the Lord. So today, question, are, are, are you providing a light for your children to carry? Are you providing them with a torch? Are you passing on that, that light? I pray that you're not provoking them into a dark place. So are you providing a light or are you provoking them into an anger pit? Are you providing a light or are you provoking them? Are you providing a light or you are you provoking them into a deep, deep hole? Are you providing light or are you provoking them into a shallow den? Are you providing a light or are you provoking them into a vicious cycle? Are you providing a light or you provoking them into a generational curse? Today we break those generational curses. Today we break them in the name of Jesus. Today we we, we go before God and we pray and we ask God to speak into our hearts so that we're able to speak into the hearts of our children. Today we break those generational curses to where we're not using unwholesome words to our children. We're not speaking uh, words that are going to cause them to to slip and fall, to be... To be unstable minded individuals, to be feeble minded creatures, but to be strong and knowledgeable in the power of God. We break those generational curses today that our children will not live contrary to the word of God because we're going to demonstrate before them the love of Christ. We're going to show them the compassion of Christ. And we're going to show them a forgiving heart as we forgive them, as we show them grace and the mercy that God has given us. We're going to show that to our children. And in that aspect, we are passing on a light. We're not going to yell and scream at our children. They are our gifts from God. But we're going to bring our tones down. And we're going to speak to them in a loving and a caring way. And if we do make a mistake because we're parents and we do make mistakes, we're going to own up to it. And we're going to say, I'm sorry. Mom made a mistake. Dad made a mistake. We're going to break these generational curses. We're going to allow our children to see a light of Christ. We're going to show our children that God 
And only God orchestrates things in our lives and in their lives. Only God has the power. And we're going to speak into our children's lives. And as we speak into their lives, we're going to trust God and believe God because he told us that he has the power and he's given it to us. And it lies in what we say. It lies in our tongues. Our words have meaning. And we're going to break these generational curses as we're going to speak into the lives of our children's destiny to their future. We're going to pray as God gives us a discerning spirit and he shows us the vision that he has for our children. He's going to show us the unknown so that we can speak into their destinies. We can speak into their purpose. We can speak into their ordained assignments as parents. He's given us that authority to speak. We will not speak anything that's unwholesome. We have the power to speak life and we take the authority as parents. We will break those generational curses. We will not provoke our children into anger. Well, we will not raise angry children. We will not raise disrespectful children. We will not raise unstable children. We speak right now today. That we train them up in the ways, the values, the statues of the Lord. We raise them up to know God. We raise them up to see the light of Christ. And as they see the light, they carry the light. Because greater is he. That is in me. That he that is in the world. So because of the light. Of Christ. They will see their way through the dark world. We speak that they will have a discerning spirit. We speak that they will know. The voice of God. And they will not follow a stranger. But they will follow. The voice of God. They will be instructed by the voice of God. It's what we pray today. We are not raising children. That are lost. We are raising children. That are found. That know the way. And because they know the way. They will not depart from the teachings of the Lord. They will not depart from the teachings of the Lord. Because they have been taught the way. Because the word of God says that when we raise them up in the way. When they are grown, they won't depart from it. Our children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalms 127:3 says, Lo, children are in heritage. Of the Lord. They are given to us by the Lord. God has trusted us with our children. He has trusted us to give them back to him. To raise them up. Knowing him. Loving him. Honoring him. Praising him. Worshiping him. And we as parents. We must pray. We must pray diligently, consistently, that our children continue to hear the voice of God 
Even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of chaos, they hear the voice of God. In the midst of the storm, they hear the voice of God. God will protect our children. God will build a fence around our children so the enemy will not triumph over them. He loves us and he loves them enough to protect them, protect them, protect them, shield them. We must teach our children to resist the devil. We must teach our children to stay humble. But the way we teach them that is by us doing it as well. We must do it in front of them. We must stay humble. We must submit ourselves to God. Resisting the devil. They must see mommy and daddy in the light. In order for them to draw from that light. In order for them to carry that light. They must see the light. They must see the light. We must speak blessings over our children. As we speak blessings. The blessings shall be. The blessings shall chase them. The blessings shall chase them. The blessings of the Lord shall chase our children. When we speak blessings over our children. Speak blessings over our children. Speak blessings into our children's future. And then the blessings will go ahead of our children. He said he'll place his angels around them. He'll place his angels ahead of them. He's like a consuming fire to go before them. To destroy anything that tries to be in their pathway. We must speak the blessings of God over our children. As he sends the angels out. God, hallelujah, Jesus. Go with our children, Father Lord. God, hallelujah. Send your angels before him, Lord God. Send your angels after them, Lord God. Surround your angels around them, Father Lord Jesus. Be that consuming fire, fire, Lord God. Hallelujah. Cover them, Lord God, with your anointing, your power. That the enemy can't see them as they're blinded. The enemy is blinded. The enemy can't see. The blessings of the Lord are upon your children. The blessing of the Lord are upon your children. Speak blessings over your children because the blessings of the Lord are upon your children. The blessings of the Lord are upon your children. Speak the blessings of the Lord are on your children. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. I I, I speak it. I speak it. I speak it. I speak it. Uh, I can remember when my children were young, uh, 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 younger, and and they're, they're, they're still young, but when they were younger, I remember seeing things in them of their of their future i could see my son i could see his his future i could see my daughter i could see her future and as i began to see the future not only did i see it with my eyes but i began to speak it from my mouth i began to lay hands on them and i began to decree and i began to declare their their visions that i saw and i was it, it, it was god showing me my children's future and I could prophesy. And then I, 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 I could break yokes. Because he said he's given us the power. He's given us power. Come on, parents. Where is your power? Come on, parents. Where is your power? Come on, parents. Where is your power? Speak life into your children's destiny, into your children's future, into your children's purpose, into your children's assignments. Speak the blessings of the Lord over your children. 
Speak the blessings of the Lord over your children. Speak the blessings of the Lord over your children. Then you are speaking generational blessings. Because as you bless your children, the blessings don't just stop with your children. They go to your children, children's children. Speak blessings. Speak blessings over your children. I know you have, if you if you if you're a Bible a scholar, if you're a person that's read the Bible, I know you didn't seen in the Bible where where there were blessings spoken into the children's life and those blessings manifested. Those blessings manifested. There, there, there were occasions where blessings were spoken into the children. And and if and if you and if you and if you ever think about some things that's happened, if you have ever spoke something against God's word, you saw it happen. Because he said we have the power of life or death, and it lies in our tongue. I, I choose to speak life over my children. I choose to speak life. I, I choose to speak life. Because they are a heritage of the Lord. They are the fruits of my wound and they are the rewards from God. God has entrusted me with those children. And now they are both of my children or now young adults. And I'm still speaking blessings into their lives. I'm still praying. I'm still praising God for his blessings because he gave me the gifts. I've gone through some things in my lifetime. There are some things that has happened in my life that I have no idea how I got caught up in it, but I did. But one thing that I can say God still gave me favor. He gave me favor because when I think of how he blessed me with children, he gave me something so great. And to know that my duty is to raise them up in the, in the right way, to raise them up to know him. But the only way I can do that is I've got to know him for myself. The only way I can raise them up right, I got to be upright. I got to live right. I got to speak right. I got to walk right. I got to operate from his spirit in order for my lifestyle to be of God, a godly lifestyle. I can't teach them something that I am, I myself am not doing. You can't take the Bible and hit it upside their head and expect them to understand God's ways, God's thoughts. You can't do it. You've got to be that walking Bible. You've got to be those Bible verses speaking, not just speaking those Bible verses. You've got to be that Bible. You got to live by those Bible verses. You got to operate from the power of God. So there's nothing that you can do but be the light of Christ. That's all that is going to take for them to see the light and for them to carry it. You've got to carry it first. It's like being in a marathon and you're carrying a torch and you're carrying the, carrying the baton and you're getting ready to pass it to the person in front of you. You got to think of your children as being the person in front of you as you're passing that baton to them. You got to keep running and you got to pass that torch to them, the light. You got to pass that baton to them. But first, you got to run with it. First, you got to stay in the race. First, you got to be steadfast and unmovable. You got to do it first. They got to see you doing it. They got to know mama doing it. They got to know daddy doing it. They got to see it in you first. <sighs> All right, hallelujah. 
I am one emotional creature at times. It's the spirit of God. It's, it's, it's God's love. Sometimes I think that I'm just emotional and, and the Lord has told me, it, it's not me. He's speaking through me. So if tears roll down my cheek, that's, 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 that's God. That's God. God has such a, a, a compassion for us because we are his children. I'm talking about my children, but I'm his child. And he wants me to be saved. How can I save my children if I'm lost? How can I? How can I save my babies if I'm lost? How can I show them the light if I'm not walking in the light of Christ? How can I pass them on? Love. Peace. Long suffering. The joy of the Lord. If I don't have it. I can't give them something that I don't have. So I'm going to pray today that you as parents, or if you're a single parent, I raised mine as a single parent. I was in and out of marriages. My last husband was murdered. This is my father's my, I'm sorry, my son's father. My daughter was was uh, conceived through a pre my first marriage, which which ended in a divorce. So, God blessed me to raise those children up as a single mom, and I'm grateful to God for that because I couldn't have done it without Him. God, God allowed the light to shine through me. So that my children would be able to see him through me. I can't tell you how many nights I laid in my bed. And I cried out, God help me. Show me how to raise my children. Show me how, Father. I don't know how. I don't know how. And he says, I'll teach you. I'll show you. And even now, my prayer now is God keep them. Lord Jesus, keep them close to you. Lord, let your voice be heard. Is my prayer now. I don't want to ever provoke my children or anybody's children to anger. I do want to provide them with the light of Christ. So I want this message to help someone realize how important your life is to your children and to others that are watching you. Because as time went on, I began to realize that it was more than just my children that was watching me, my birth children. There were other children that was watching me. And then I went on to be a, uh, while I'm raising my children, I'm also a, a teacher. So when I went into the classroom, God showed me how to continue to let the light be so bright that it drew the children that I was responsible for teaching and the ones that I was responsible out in the hallways and the ones that I would run into at Walmart and say, hey, that's that teacher. That's that teacher. They still had to see a light in me, whether if I was in the classroom or if I was at Walmart, if they saw me at church singing, they still had to know me as a woman of God. And so today, my prayer is that you allow your light to be passed on to your children's children's children children. Is my prayer. The tears are just rolling down because I know how um, I know how important it is, and I know that God loves us so much. He's given us so much. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to thank you. Father Lord God, I come before you, Lord Jesus, asking you, Father Lord Jesus, to teach us parents to raise our children up to know you, God. Teach us how to train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're grown, they won't depart from it, Father. Father, Lord God, teach us, Father, Lord God, how to be humble. Teach us how to study your word. Teach us how to pray. Father, Lord Jesus, teach us how to be submissive to you, Father, Lord God, and to resist the devil. Teach us as parents how to let our light shine and it draws others to Jesus teach us how to let that light shine before our children that they will carry that that light as well they will grab hold to the baton and they will run with it as we run this Christian race Father God I just thank you for everything we just thank you for giving us the children we just thank you for giving us this heritage thank you for giving us a reward of these children. And Lord God, show us how. Show us how to be Christian parents. Parents that walk upright. Parents that speak with wholesome. Parents that show grace. Parents that give mercy. Parents that are forgiving. Parents that embrace our children. Parents that speak into their destiny. Father, Lord God, show us our children's purpose so that we can continue to pray for their purpose. Even if they're grown, Father, teach us how to continue to pray for their purpose and pray that they hear your voice and they operate from the gifts that you've given them and they not get tangled up in bondage And right now, Father Lord Jesus, I touch and agree as we break generational curses and we release generational blessings as the blessings will chase our children, as the blessings go before them. Father Lord God, as you send out, Father Lord God, your angels to go before them, as you send your angels to go behind them, as you build a fence, Lord God, As you pour a great anointing on them. And the enemy is blinded. And will not see our children. Today's prayer, Father. Forgive our children of any sins that they've done. Forgive us all of our sins, Father Lord God. Father Lord Jesus, save our entire household. Save our families. Save us right now in the name of Jesus, my prayer, Father. Jesus' mighty name. Teach us how to provide a light and not to provoke our children. Teach us how to encourage them no matter their age. Teach us how to encourage our children. I come against any suicidal thoughts in our children. 
I break any thoughts of suicide or any thoughts of taking their lives right now. We as parents teach us how to pray for their purpose. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for listening to the Barbara Cox Podcast. And parents, where is your power? Use your power to speak life into your children, no matter what age. I don't care what age they are. With parents, we have the power. We have the power to speak into our children's destiny. I love you all. God bless. Bye-bye.